I've got a new vacuum cleaner. Got one of these. G-Tech Multi Mark II ATF 036. Let's have a look. Not the usual sort of. No idea what that is. It looks like a comb. Oh, that's what. Right. This is the vacuum cleaner itself. What a beast, isn't it? Ooh. I have no idea how this works yet. I don't know how to. It just arrived. Oh. <laughs> it's got a light on it. It's got a light on it. Fun. Oh, funny. Yeah, so you can see into the dark. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Oh, blimey. Feels quite powerful. What else have we got in here? It's obviously a charger. How's that going? Ooh! It's stuck on the thing. This is typical bloke stuff, this is. I'm just getting it out and not reading anything. Oh! It's got a bristle, bristle? A bristle thing. I presume that goes on, on the end there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the lights up there. Oh, oh blimey. This is a beast, isn't it? Oh, and there's a long one. With a cardboard bit in it. Yeah, I'd soon take the cardboard bit out. Yeah. Well, I could do the ceiling with that, can not I? Okay. That one got a light on it, that one. Oh, I like that. Got like a filter in it. I don't know how you get the filter out. Battery there. I probably ought to read the instructions. There's a, another one here. Another brush. Does that go on there? I don't know where that goes on. Is there that somewhere? Yeah. Right, okay. I better read the instructions then. And the oh. <laughs> bought this with our own money, didn't we? Yeah. 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 So, so a, I'm not sponsored by G-Tech. No, no, not a freebie. No. So I'll go and read the instructions. I'll let I'll let you know how we get on. I'll let you know how we get on. Well, hello. Um I know how much people love to know what's gone wrong with our motorhome. Uh so I've got the motorhome booked in on Tuesday, it's now Friday, uh, for a number of warranty items that need repair. We're uh, just coming up to two years warranty. We bought it in 2019, uh, 2021. Uh, I think that's right, yeah. <laughs> and um, there are a few items I've reported uh, for repair at Todd's uh, under the warranty. So let me show you what they are. The first thing is these cupboards. Uh, as you open up this cupboard, this one is probably the worst one. And if you can see that this trim is actually peeling away. It is only trim. I think it's only a stick-on plastic thing. And it's peeling away and it's peeled away all along there. I suppose it, because you're catching the edge of it. But uh, like I say, that's the worst one. I'll show you the others. Others are in the back here. I had to try and remember because it takes ten ages for them to get these cupboards. They're actually going to replace the cupboard doors. You see this one here. I think this one's got a little bit as well. Yeah, there. See that coming away. But uh, the others seem perfectly all right. There's a little bit there, I think. I'm not sure. That one's all right. That one's all right. Oh no, there's a little bit there as well, a tiny bit there. Uh, yeah. So 
uh, reported that back in beginning of September. Uh, no, hang on. Uh, so I reported that back in August and it took them a couple of months to get these doors. They were in last month, it's now the end of October so hopefully they'll, re they'll replace those cupboard doors. It's the fridge, that's the other thing. It seems to me like this never closes properly. You, if you can see that, there's an extra sort of push at the bottom and it actually seems as though the whole cupboard door is too low. You've got this vent in syst venting system that you're supposed to pull this arm out and that connects to this little sort of toggle thing. But I think it's very difficult to film this, but it actually misses. That actually misses the, the catch. So it feels like the whole God, yeah, the whole cupboard door feels like it's too low, which is probably explains why this is having trouble shutting it. Maybe there's some, um, I don't know, maybe there's some adjustment or some shims or something they need to put in. Can you see the gap? Just there. If you look down at the bottom, there's hardly any gap at all. So whether they need to put some shims in at the bottom to lift the door up, but what happens if this door doesn't properly latch like that? You've just pushed it here like that to shut it. You're meant to be able to open it the other side. Of course, now it won't open the other side. So you have to push that in and then you can open it that way. I'm not a great fan of this double door idea. I mean here it, it's pointless, I don't really need it opening that side because that's the bedroom and I'd have to be in the bedroom to get into the fridge. Very rarely do that. So I think I prefer the old fridge. See, it does feel a bit difficult to open. Well, the next thing is this hecky. You can see there's a gap there. This whole unit, you see these little catch things here? They're meant to hold it in place and they just won't, won't push up. Feels like the, the, the opening is too small. It's difficult to explain, but like I say, those won't go up. And it does mean that this blind becomes incredibly tough to open the thing, so that's that. So that's it. It's going in on Tuesday for these items and uh, hopefully we can get that sorted. Um, I'm going to drain the water down. I don't think I've uh, filmed that this year. Now it is getting quite cold. It's nearly November now and uh, I think it's an idea to drain the water down. So I'm going to do that. So I'll show you that and uh, I think it's always a good idea to drain the water anyway when you're sending it off to the uh, uh, to the dealers. and. Uh, Let's show you. So on the control panel, uh, we go to water. I've got fresh water in there still. See, I've got frost alerts on there. I haven't got the tank heater on. So I'm going to empty the, the fresh water, confirm. I don't know if you can hear that, but that was the valve opening to let the water out. It is fresh water, it's not going anywhere, so it's just draining onto our drive. And uh, it starts to appear. So, draining the water, what I'm going to do is open the taps. Same in the uh, washroom, let's open up the taps. I tend to leave them in the middle position. So that's hot and cold that would drain away. And we'll do the same in the shower. And the middle position. We'll just open that. And good idea to let it drain out there. Okay. I think I always 
think it's also a good idea just to unscrew this. Make sure you don't lose the washer. Yeah, just put the washer back in there so you don't lose it. And the other thing is to let the drain, the boiler drain. Now, in our motorhome, the boiler drain is just next to the boiler, which is under the kitchen sink. Get, shine the light on it. Little yellow lever. Pull it up in the upright position, and that lets the water drain out of the boiler. Okay, it should be the fresh water drained now. The other thing to empty, of course, is the wastewater. But we've already emptied that. I think it's always a good idea just to give the van a clean before you send it to the dealers as well. Uh, I think if you leave your van in a, in a state, it might come back in a state because you think that's what you expect. <laughs> just me, maybe. But uh, I'm just going to give it a clean. And I'm going to use our new GTEC vacuum cleaner. See how we get on with that. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have spotted that I've taken the carpets out. Uh, notice these white bits here are the Velcro stickers I used to stop it sliding about. So I haven't got poppers, but they seem to have worked okay in the last two years. It stops the carpet from moving about. But I am going to give the carpets a good clean, so I'll show you a little bit of... Uh, Mr. Sheen. I just used that on the sort of the plastic, uh, the dashboard and the wooden bits, uh, cupboards, spray it on and wipe it off as they say. Seems to work pretty well. Don't spray the telly, it's never a good idea to spray inside the telly. <laughs> Let's give it a wipe. And for you cleaning the uh, washroom area, I use the all-purpose cleaner. For cleaning the fridge, I use the all-purpose cleaner. And for cleaning the cooker area and the sink, I use the all-purpose cleaner. But please use a different cloth for each of them. You don't want to be using the cloth that you use to clean the toilet to clean your fridge. done most of the floors in here just going you know around like this <laughs> and 
the great thing about it, and I can't really show you, is the, the light in it. And it's got a light in it. That really helps you find all the bits and pieces. And the batteries seems to last much longer than the Dysons ever did. Uh, it's taken, I've been going around about 20 minutes with the uh, the G-Tech and it's uh, on two bars out of four. Obviously it's going to need recharging once you've used it but the Dyson used to run out after about 10 minutes. Let's see if I can film emptying the uh, thing. It says you just pull it off and it just pulls off. And it's got a little lid underneath. So. Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so that, that just pulls off there. That's it. Oh, try not to get it on the car on the chair. <laughs> we'll have to do clean that now. Yeah, and the final thing is I'm just going to go around the floors whilst I've got the carpets up with some floor wipes. Some biodegradable anti-back floor wipes from Tesco. Right, back from Todd's, got all the uh, things done I needed. The, they've changed the cupboard doors, so they changed this one. So obviously I've got some nice new trim on it. And that fits, that fits fine, that's perfect. Matches the other door. In the bedroom I've changed this door here, which is fine, the door itself is good. But, oh and they've changed this one as well, at the back, which and that matches nicely, so that's all good. But, there's the but. The shape of these cupboards, these door cupboards, is different to that one, which is absolutely bizarre. They must have changed how they manufacture them since these, the, the original cupboard doors were installed. And it's the same over here change this one but it doesn't match the original one or that side either. So what they're going to do is they've got to replace the other cupboard doors, the ones that weren't faulty, to match these ones. So you have to replace that one, that one and that one. So we're going to have to paste four more cupboard doors. Uh, so obviously they've got to order four more cupboard doors, so I'm not sure how many more months they'll be, but hopefully I should get them by December when the vehicle is due for its habitation service. So I've booked it in for its habitation service, so hopefully they can change them then. The other thing they've done is they've refitted the, the hecky so that now closes properly, so that's good. I can't really see it in the light there, but yeah, they've refitted that, so that's good. The other thing is the cupboard door. He said they've said that they've adjusted the cupboard door, so it now opens and closes both sides a lot easier. So I think it was an adjustment they did. That's it. 
and you don't have to sort of push it at the bottom there. So that's good. So I'm reasonably happy everything's got done. We're, it's now Tuesday afternoon. On Thursday we're getting the the Bailey Adamo, so that's coming. So we'll be transferring the stuff out of this into the Bailey um, once it arrives and getting to know the Bailey. Bailey Adamo. So I'm quite excited about that. So so stay tuned for that and uh, so you get updates. Remember to hit the notifications bell if you've not already. Please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, give us a thumbs up and we'll catch up with you in the next one. See you then. Bye.